G'day everyone and welcome to what may well be the last video on tools and stuff. For the year 2023, what a doozy of a shitter of a year it has been. <laughs> Now this video is going to sort of be just a bit of a conversation really, a little bit different to my standard reviews. Uh, this video sort of came about from two ideas I had that I was going to put over on builds and stuff, my other channel. If you have not subscribed to my other channel, up in the top corner up here, down in the description, I've got two other tool related channels, so if you haven't checked those out, go check those out. Uh, so it was going to be a video about you remember a few weeks ago I did those um, polls where I asked you a few things about tools. Well, I was going to share some of the results of that and have a bit of a talk about that. So that was going to be one of the videos. And the other video was going to be where Makita tools are made these days and which tools are made in which countries and stuff like that. Because I get a lot of people saying they're all made in China. And so I just wanted to have a little bit of a talk about that. Um, and those were going to be two different videos that I was going to stick on builds and stuff. And then I thought, ah, oh, the hell with it. I'll just stick them both together now, have a bit of a yarn, and chuck them up on tools and stuff, eh? So that's what we're going to do. When I come to explaining the results of the polls, I think I might drag a, put a monitor in the back here, drag a TV and stick it there and see if it works. It might be too reflective or something. I don't know yet. Um, so first we'll start with the countries, where these tools are made. I hear people complain all the time. Oh, Makita sucks now man they make all their tools in China well they don't make all their tools in China and the reason they do make tools in China though like every other company that makes tools in China is because of you you're the one who did it you can't blame all these companies for doing it they're trying to keep costs down because you keep wanting to get things cheaper and you may want them made in Japan but are you willing to pay for them to be made in Japan I very much doubt it because the same people that tend to complain that they're made in China are probably also the same people that always complain that they're too bloody expensive. Well, you can't have both. It's either made in China or it's made in Japan. If it's made in China, it's going to be cheaper than if it's made in Japan, even though they still have standards and tests and stuff. They've still got Japanese oversight in China, keeping an eye on things, which leads me to another thing. The tools that are made in China, the equivalents that are made in Japan are exactly the same seems to be a lot of people particularly in one part of the world that think they're different probably because of two videos put out by a lot of you know who they are shall i say it shall i call them out for their shit videos that they did on makita impact drivers comparing ones from japan and ones from the us that were completely different models and then saying the japanese ones were better when you're comparing it to an updated model hmm yeah two channels led a lot of you astray and it's just not the case the inside of the japanese impact drivers are the same as the ones everywhere else the only difference is the chuck on the end which as many of you will know it's because the japanese use different size bits to the rest of us anywho so also which tools are made in china this tool is made in the united kingdom this is the brushed jigsaw as you can see 18 volt this is the brushless also made in the United Kingdom. This is the brand new, just came out a few days ago from the time of me filming this. JV002G 40 volt box jigsaw. Are you focused? Yeah. Right, so that is not made in the UK, unfortunately. This one is made in China. So also made in China, if I just reach in front of you here, is got a glimpse of my Makita shirt I'm wearing today <laughs> is the uh, barrel grip which also made in China but that helps keep the cost down if these are made in Japan like lots of you want <laughs> be a couple hundred bucks dearer than what they are here these are actually cheaper I think than what I paid for this old brushed one years ago so that's why things are made in China because you want them cheaper so what other tools aren't made in China. Well, there's quite a lot and it does vary depending on what part of the world you're in. I hear people say all the time that they've got Makita tools that are made in Romania. I don't have any that are made in Romania, but they also have plants in places like Brazil, uh, UK, and of course Japan. 
if you are on the 40 volt platform and you use 40 volt max tools you may have noticed that there's a lot more of those that are made in japan and often with the japanese tools you can tell which ones are made in japan before you even buy them because the price tags on the ones made in japan are a lot higher than the ones made in china and is that what you want do you want to pay more for it to be made in japan or do you want it to be made in china i don't know eh? but you don't get a choice on one way or the other you just have to take whichever one they're doing whichever way so i'll just show you some other tools that are made in japan this tool here the little file sander is a great little tool it's awesome i love it i use it for so many different things and when i went to buy it i thought geez it's rather pricey and then i had a look on the label and okay fucking great what the fuck just happened there uh, I haven't got fucking time for this. Seems the power's gone off. Um, one minute. Where's the light, damn it. Okay, um, <laughs> where were we? I really want to get this video done. I can't afford to waste any time, so I'm gonna have to set up a battery light, thankfully. Oh, hang on, no way. <laughs> fucking A. Oh, I just fucking remembered. Fuck yeah. Might have to put a few beeps in this video because, yeah, there's a few too many F's there, I think. Ooh. This might be a little bit tricky, but hopefully I can get some leads to reach it. And we can um, run it off this. Get the power going again. The EcoFlow. Awesome. This is exactly why I want these things for moments just like these. Um, don't know why the power's gone off, the weather's not bad, maybe somebody's hit a transformer up the road, that seems to happen every now and again. Anyway, this is the EcoFlow Max, it's like a, um, a little power station, and I can plug a bunch of lights in the back there. So, I will set this up and we can carry on filming. If you want to know more about this, have a look up in the top corner. I'll put a video, I'll put a link down there as well. Seeing as we'll be using it now, maybe for the rest of the video, see if the power comes back on or not. Um, yeah, they're very cool. And hopefully it's now going to save this video. Okay, oh, it's going to be a bit in shot, isn't it? It's annoying, I can't fit it anywhere else because of the leads in the back here. It's, um, yeah, the leads are only a certain length that I've got. So we're just going to have to go with this. Let's turn off the auxiliary battery light here and turn on the EcoFlow and we should have regular lighting again. Where's the button? <laughs> should I turn this on first? Dumbass. Step one. Step two. Let there be light. Woohoo! Okay, back in action. I might just have to... <laughs> Shift the camera and maybe stand on the other side for the rest of this video. And where was I up to here? What was I talking about? We were talking about this, weren't we? So, okay, let's carry on. So, like I said, this is made in Japan and it was quite expensive. And when I first bought it, I thought, whoa, that's pricey. But yeah, then I saw made in Japan. And it is a nicely made tool, nicely finished, good little unit. Now I'm going to show you... Oh, I've got much room on this side of the camera here at the moment. Uh, lousy power. Now, without going through all my 18 volt tools, I'm not sure where they're all made. Um, there's a lot of them that I've got. Most of them are made in China. I can't think of too many that are made in other places. Oh, the random orbital sander is made in the UK, like the jigsaws there. And I'm pretty sure somebody told me they had a random orbital sander that was made in... Romania, so there might be certain tools that are outsourced to each particular region of the world and made in those areas While others are all made in China and even the people in Japan who have to buy Makita tools Most of them are still Chinese tools. They don't make half for Japan and half for China with the exception of the impact drivers if you get a colored impact driver from Makita like I do every time they bring one out They are made in Japan but they say made in Japan on them, but they may just be basically assembled in Japan. The insides, as I said, are the same. So they're probably using a lot of components that are made in China. If you get the hydraulic ones, wherever you are in the world, this one came from the US and it is made in Japan. So impact drivers, you can get some impact drivers that are made in Japan. 
Another reason why that one is so expensive, that is a pricey tool, not necessarily because of the tech that's inside it, but because they haven't made that many of them, because they're making them in Japan, and yeah, so a bit more pricey. If you want one of the colored ones, have a look down in the description. I will put some links if you want to buy one of those. You need to get them direct from Japan because they don't sell them anywhere else in the world. Now I've got seven Makita circular saws, cordless ones, and they're all made in China. Even ones like this that are only sold in Japan, they are still made in China. And if you haven't seen this before, what I'm doing right now is removing the front, which makes this a very cool tool because it has a reverse bevel so that you can undercut walls and stuff, cut out floors. Very cool little tool, but only available from Japan. And I found out a reason why that may be today. I won't go into it in this video, but yeah. Get them from Japan if you want one of those down in the description as well. Uh, but made in China. But I do have one that is made in Japan. And of course, from what I've been saying, it is the most expensive of the circular saws I have bought and it's a metal cutting one and this one here is made in Japan it's a nice bit of kit this this is the CS002G there is the 1G as well which is pretty much identical apart from this little lever here see that little lever all it does is retract the guard to make the start of your cut easier that's the only difference between the 01 and the 02 and they are made in Japan and they're nice tools, that's for sure. This battery, the cells made in Singapore, the pack put together in China. This, the new high output battery, the cells made in Japan, the battery put together, you guessed it, in China. Maybe that's why that one's a little bit more expensive than that one. New tech and made in Japan. The 40 volt bandsaw is also made in Japan. The 40 volt right angle drill and auger also made in Japan and rumor has it the new framing nailer will at least at first be made in Japan from what I can gather the tools that are gonna have a huge amount of sales you know what they think is gonna sell really really well that they're gonna make en masse they make in China circular saws grinders things that are just they're gonna turn over a heap of things that not quite as common like this for instance they might make in Japan. They don't need to have such big factories and stuff to do it. They can just pump it out nicely at home in Japan, leave all the mass produced stuff to China. Anyway, I'm sick of saying the word China and Japan. So I am now going to tell you the results of what you guys thought and what you guys have. And yeah, just a bit of interesting facts and stats about Makita and tools in general. But to do that, I think I might clear this bench and see if I can set up a screen. Oh, which I'm gonna have to do off the EcoFlow as well. Woohoo! It's like a Queen video from the 70s. Bam! We are cooking with gas. So, a few of you will remember, at least, you know, a few thousand of you should remember this post from uh, it says a month ago. Was it that long ago? Ooh. I started putting up some polls just on the spur of the moment just to make November a bit more interesting. And the first one, Makita have released a slim high output 12 volt battery. What about 18 volt? Who wants larger capacity 18 volt batteries? Around a thousand of you voted in this one. This was the smallest turnout. 84% want bigger batteries. And yeah, I know this is one of the things people ask all the time about. And so that is why I decided to make that my first question. And I got lots of comments, 51 different comments down here, all about <laughs> Makita's 18 volt batteries. Well, I don't have any definitive knowledge or any answer for that question, but with current technologies that have just come out, like recent technologies, not current, recent technologies, and ones that are about to come out, I'm thinking maybe Makita might do some updating of the 18 volt batteries, because, geez, a lot of comments. Holy moly, oh, it's still going. Because they have released a 40 volt battery with the new tabless 21700 cells, which you saw earlier in this video. There is also in development 18650 cells, 
with the same tablets technology. So if they do that, they could release the same capacity batteries. So they could do a six amp hour battery that had more power, five amp hour batteries that had the same runtime, but a lot more power and ran cooler. So the batteries should in theory last longer, be better for your battery, be better for your tools, better for everything, um, but still the same runtime. And then of course there is the pouch cells, which are still an untested really technology. Time will tell if they really do perform as we've been told they should. But that does have its limitations too. If you know anything about the DeWalt ones, you will know that the 1.7, the original one they did, it's a bit dark here because I've got all the lights turned off so there's no reflection on the screen. It's quite easy having the lights turned off though when there's like no power. So I've got my laptops thankfully charged, plugged into the TV and the TV's running off the EcoFlow. Anywho, yeah, the 1.7s are nice and slim, great little batteries, plenty of power but not much runtime. Then they released the five amp hour one and it's like, holy shit, this thing is huge. Much bigger than a standard five amp hour battery. Yeah, it's got good um, power, um, but yeah, much bigger battery in a weird shape and no good for a lot of the older 18 volt Makita tools. I think they could go with the tabless ones and get more power at least, if not more runtime. But with these newer tabless cells, they may also be able to get a little bit higher capacity Time will tell and we might be able to get say an 8 amp power with 18 650 cells, something like that. I don't know. Anyway, next question. So the second question I asked, which is the most popular Makita region of the world? Now if I had to pick it myself without asking you guys, I think what's on the screen right now is pretty close to what I would have thought. Although I would probably go Europe, Asia, Oceania, North America, and then the others. But yeah, look at that, 44% Europe, 22% North America, double. And 25% Oceania, coming in at number two, Oceania, if you're not aware, basically being Australia and New Zealand. Um, although that did confuse some people, including, unfortunately, people from Australia. Don't know where that comment is, but I do recall there was one of somebody from Australia not knowing what Oceania meant. Um, sure as shit ain't America. So, as you saw, Europe. What, Australia, there we go. Australia, why no Australia? Dude, 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 dude. Dude, 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 dude. <laughs> So there you go. So polls are always a good bit of fun. <laughs> so anyway, Europe, the most popular region in the world for Makita. Europe is very different to North America, very different to Oceania or Australasia. <laughs> um, Europe, Makita and Bosch, very strong. North America and down here, Bosch, not very big at all. Um, Bosch is a very popular brand in the UK and all throughout Europe, but yeah, it doesn't have the same presence in other parts of the world. North America, of course, being very popular with Milwaukee and DeWalt. And I mean, those brands are popular here too. I'm not sure exactly how popular those are in Europe. Way less popular, I think, than they are here in Oceania. Anyway, that question got 1.4 thousand votes, so we're going up. Next question. This is where we started getting into things. I really wanted to keep these polls running, but there were so many other things going on with Black Friday and everything and Thanksgiving and other shit that was going on in my life that year. Ran out of time to keep it going. This one, very interesting. 1800 odd votes in this one. What is your preferred platform? 12 volt, 14, 18, 40, or some of the other oddball ones. So the oddball ones didn't even make the cut. 14 volt more than the other ones, only just, I don't know if you can tell on the screen, there is a slightly bigger line here than there is here, but still didn't even get to 1%. Only 2% for the 12 volt or 10.8 volt as it's known in Europe and in Japan as well, I think. 18 volt LXT, been around the longest, possibly the biggest battery platform on the planet for power tools. Uh, not in the US, but in other parts of the world. What just happened then? Some other light just went off somewhere. 
Is that my battery one down there? Oh, it's the... <laughs> Man, they took a long time. The um, impact drivers that I had on the screen before at the beginning that had the lights going, the ring light and the um, four lights on the TD002G, they just went off behind me. So they've been going a long time. I've been down here. They stay on for about an hour, I think. Anyway, back to this. So yeah, most popular tool platform on the planet. Been around since, what, 2005? So like we're looking at nearly 20 years of that battery platform. People always say, I'm not buying battery tools because they keep changing the batteries and you know, you gotta keep buying new batteries because the, they've changed the platform every few years and batteries don't fit. Well, come on. <laughs> Almost 20 years. I mean, how long do you want? Not to mention, even after they stop making the tools, they'll keep selling the batteries and other companies will make knockoff batteries. So, you know, not really an argument. Leave that one behind. That's a dinosaur argument, that one. 33% there for the XGT, so about half of 18 volt. When you consider how long XGT's been around, we're only talking a lot of the planet has only had it for the last two years, so that's pretty good. Half of what the LXT that's been around for nearly 20 years. So a lot of guys have jumped on the 40 volt, so that's interesting to see. So I know you want bigger 18 volt batteries. I now know where you live. I know which battery platforms you prefer, but how many cordless Makita tools do you have across every platform? Now, this is a bit tricky. It's a, it's a little bit annoying because YouTube only allow five poll questions. And so I had to, yeah, it was a bit tricky, especially for the next question that I do recall. So none, 6% of you are watching my channel, thanks and you haven't even got any tools, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> 1,800 people have voted on this particular poll. 6% of you don't have any Makita tools. One to three tools, 11%. So people just starting out, DIY people perhaps. Four to 10 tools, which is what I expected would be the top one, and it is, but only just. So most of you in that four to 10, four to 10 tool range at 40%, 11 to 25, 35% and over 26 Makita cordless tools, 9%. So that's nearly, let's say it's 180 of you. And we've got 66 comments on this one. That's a lot. And as you can see, some people have a lot more than they thought they had when they count them. Myself, I don't want to even think about where I fit on that graph. Well, I know where I fit. I know it's on the bottom one. <laughs> It's 26 plus for sure, but as for how many, I don't know. Who has got the most? Let's see who's, well, we've got a 41 there. Um, I'm losing track in my head after 50. I'll make a list and tell you later. Where's the list? Come on. I want to know how many. 25, 27, 23, 42. It's a lot of people that have got a lot of Makita tools. Zero Makita saving up for Matabo. How did I not delete that comment? I don't know. Bloody hell. I don't know why you'd be saving up for Matabo. Come on. Really? Seriously? Holy shit, Richard. 46 XGT. 85 fucking LXT. 21 12 volt. Wow. That is a lot of tools. Oh, there's more. But wait, there's more. I think we've probably got our winner. What did I, what did I reply to that one? Let's take a wee look, see here. I think you're the winner so far, no kidding. Replacing your DeWalt with 40 volt, that's probably a wise choice. I don't have a lot of time for DeWalt anymore. The quality of their tools and their batteries is, yeah. Leaves a lot to be desired. Okay, so we'll, we'll say Richard's the winner. I'd say that's a lot of fucking tools. <laughs> and now I've just slipped in another couple of F words. Thanks to you, Richard. Bloody hell. Right, next question. Oh, my old mate John doesn't have enough. You got quite a few, bro. You got quite a few. So this one, like I just said a moment ago, was a bit tricky to do because of the limit of only five. I would like to have done a a sort of 15 to 30 maybe, and then a 30 to 50, and then 50 plus, but 
It is what it is. I can't unfortunately change YouTube's system. I also was really interested to know how many people only had a few, how many people were just DIY sort of ones, and how many people were full on Makita tradie guys. So 1400 votes, You've still got these people that are still saving up like there was in the last poll. 13% have one to three batteries. So that's quite a lot that basically just have one or two tools and one or two batteries to go with those tools and they're maybe stuck at that. They've just bought a kit with a drill and that's that. It is dangerous for you people to carry on watching my channel because it will end up costing you more money and you will end up buying more tools. Trust me. I hear it from people every day. <laughs> Four to 14, 65%. So most of you have somewhere around the five to 10 probably batteries. So that is a little lower than I thought. Like I didn't think there'd be that many people that had that amount of batteries. I thought, especially after the last poll with the amount of people that had a lot of tools, I thought there'd be a lot more batteries. 15 to 49 batteries, 16%. So that's the category I'm in and 50 plus 2 percent so what's that that's about 28 to 30 people have more than 50 batteries I know one of those people that has 100 plus Makita batteries and yeah I don't know why you need that many come on you don't use that many they're only going to end up dying because you're not using them next poll this one deals with the contentious issue is corded better than cordless Ooh. So, which do you prefer? I only use corded because they are cheaper, 2%. I only use corded because they have more power and runtime, 4%. So that's 6% of people only use corded that watch this channel, which is interesting considering I don't show corded tools on this channel. It is essentially a, what? It's probably 99% at this point, cordless tools. I use both corded and cordless pretty equally, 15%. And then the one that I thought would be the most popular, judging by, as I've just said, what my content is on my channel, which is predominantly cordless. I use cordless and occasionally corded on rare occasions. That's the category I also fit into as well, 63%. So it's interesting to see most of the ones that are the highest percent are the same ones I would fit into. So yeah, we're on the same page, people. Corded, are you kidding? It's cordless or nothing. I mean, that is also basically me. The only thing I use that's corded really is like bench drills, um, my table saw, although hopefully that'll change soon. But yeah, 17% of you only go in cordless. Well done. 1,700 of you voted in that one. What's the next one? The next one is the last one by the looks and it only got 1,200 votes. It's a bit disappointing, especially seen as it's probably one of the more interesting ones. So what's your favorite type of Makita tool? So, drill, hammer drill, combi drill, depends where you live, so basically your basic drill, something everybody has, right? Probably the first tool most of us ever owned, 20%, that's your favourite. Now, drills are a bit boring, you know, I don't... Uh. Now, once again, the category I would probably fall into, of course, the next one down, 46% of you, nearly half of the poll think that, shut up phone, think that <laughs> impact drivers or impact wrenches are the coolest tool, your favorite tool. And yeah, I, w I would have to agree, although I do like Midasaurs, but yeah, 46%, hard to argue. I can see why you people watch my channel. Circular saw, 21%, another staple of course. Midasaur, only 9%. I do love Midasaurs, it's, yeah. I love Midasaurs. And nail guns, being that we're a, a Makita channel primarily and this has been a predominantly Makita pole related video, the nail gun one was a little facetious, I should admit. <laughs> um, but 4% of you still put nail gun, and yeah, I do love nail guns, but not Makita nail guns, I'm afraid. Hopefully that'll change soon, fingers crossed. They're not too far away, hopefully. Wow, they're still, a little, they're still a little way away. But at least I have some firm knowledge now that they are coming with model numbers and dates and things. So stay tuned in the next video for more information about that. Anyway, that is the last poll question. Thank you for sitting through all this. Hereth in the lesson.
Right now I better go film the video for this versus this and of course these and I ended up doing one more poll so about a week ago you may have seen that I put up a poll trying to get a final conclusion which is more popular which is better the barrel grip jigsaw or a d-handle jigsaw now there was a lot of discussion in the comment section about this particularly seen as it was 50-50 for a long time. The first sort of 24 hours or so, 50-50. <laughs> Everybody liked these equally, it seemed. So, at the time of recording this, we are at around 2,700 votes in that poll. And coming in with 47% of the vote is the barrel grip. 53% for the D-handle. The D-handle is king. So tomorrow I'm reviewing the D-handle. I've already reviewed that. If you want to see that, it's up in the top corner and down in the description. This will be reviewed tomorrow right here. It will be my last review of the year. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that. So that's it. Another year done and dusted. Almost. Because tomorrow, my video of my top five Makita tools boo -boo, of 2023 will be up live so make sure you subscribe to haven't subscribed already have a good christmas have a good new year if you're having a holiday make sure you enjoy yourself spend some time with family and friends have a few brewskis on me and i will see you all in 2024 cheers guys oh yeah Bet the power comes on as soon as I push the stop button on this thing. Oh, and one last thing. These are all the people that have been supporting me throughout the year financially. Thanks, guys. Been a massive help. Some of these people have also won tools from me. So if you want the chance to win some tools, check out Patreon down in the description. Thanks, guys, for all your support throughout the year. See you later again. Next year, we're gonna get the framing nailer.